Welcome to episode number 61 of the Keep Up Podcast. Where we believe in Rasputin. Do you know the frog, Rasputin? No. From Ninja Turtles? I thought he was from The Muppets. Two. There's also a frog. From Turtles? Yeah. Is he uh, Russian? No, I think it's from like New Orleans or something. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. Um, oh, crap. Oh, crap. <laughs> that's how we're launching this one. <laughs> oh, crap. Well... Because, like, you know. Just, what? Just crap. Um, <laughs> so, listen, you're, uh, uh, according to my calculations, you're getting two episodes this week. Give or take. Because last week uh, was garbage. <laughs> and <laughs> we recorded on time and everything. And yep. then I went to edit the podcast and the audio didn't record through our mics. Mm -hmm. I guess the laptop recorded it. I don't I, even know. I couldn't figure it out. It was super low. So either... It's quiet and awful. Quiet. It was quite awful. Quiet off. Quiet. It's quite awful. awful. Um. <clears throat> so yes, we ended up having to use the camera audio. Yeah. Which was also a pain to figure out because yeah. for some reason it wasn't exporting properly. Mm -hmm. Anyways, long story short, we have a a solution. A solution. Medical solution. Mm -hmm. You just mix it together. Mix it up. And uh, so you're going to get two episodes because one's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good episode. It's a good episode. I was Content really wise, bummed about it because, yeah. man, the sound quality just impacts the whole experience. But mm -hmm. if you if you just listen to it and calm down a little bit, eventually you kind of forget about it. You, you think know? everyone's just going to be flipping out like, where's the audio? Maybe not. But sometimes, I don't know, sometimes the audio is real bad. Mm -hmm. It's hard to listen to. Yeah, but sometimes he just has bad audio. I know. I know. I know. You I know was, what I was man, just thinking? Should be past that. What? We totally forgot to turn on the AC before we were setting up. So now we're going to be sweating Today? the entire podcast. I'm yeah. fine, dude. I'm cold right Dude, now. my hands. Don't. Oh, why are you already <laughs> sweating? I don't understand that. Because once the camera's on, I just I just start going, man. Right. You just start sweating. <laughs> so speaking of sweating, <clears throat> yeah, I got a stupid question. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Um, <laughs> you have all right. You have something on your eyelid, and I just can't get over it. My eyelid. Yeah, c yeah. Right now, wipe your eyelid. All right, now it's right below your left eye. Don't Sorry, no. start this with me. <laughs> right below my left eye. I think you got it. It was like a fuzz. It's gone. All right, carry on. Stupid I don't question. want no fuzz. Um, <laughs> fuzz is a guy that what? <laughs> that's super hairy. Um. Because he's a fuzz. Yeah, I don't no, know. I get you. I get have you. we? D well, this isn't a stupid question, but uh, you don't have any reflections. Well, I didn't get to listen to uh, all of last week's yet because you were so depressed by it. I was pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking we haven't done reflections in a while, so. Yeah, well, I do it only when necessary. Yeah, yeah. and I just never reflect as we. No, know, you never do. As we established, really. anyways. Yeah. Um, okay, so my stupid question: Why does Garfield love lasagna so much? Like, commonly, cats mm. like milk and fish. That's generally their mm. main thing. So why doesn't he have, like, salmon cereal or fish crackers and a glass of milk? Well, Garfield's whole thing is his appetite, right? He is generally hungry, yes. So it's not just a cat appetite or a cat appetite. But he is, <laughs> he is a cat. He regardless. is, but his whole thing is he's got, like, this, he's got, like, a human fat guy appetite a fat appetite a <laughs> fat appetite but like he can't communicate with john so he can't say hey i really enjoy lasagna give it to me is his relationship with john his communication relationship with john as ambiguous as stewie's with his parents and yes. family guy where like very occasionally they can hear each other it's like do this <laughs> I can't tell, like, because sometimes they answer. Right. And then it's just like, okay. Did they ever establish in Family Guy whether or not they could understand him? They're, they make some jokes sometimes where they're like, I can't think of a specific one right now, but they do address it. It's like, yeah. and the baby that we <laughs> just ignore all the time, or like, they know we <laughs> talk, so. Um, 
But yeah, I don't know just why Garfield and lasagna. Yeah, the lasagna thing. Um, that's just the thing they chose. Why does Sonic love chili dogs? Well, that's easy. Why? What? Because chili dogs are delicious. And why would lasagna is delicious to some cats? I don't think so. If I were to give Salem a lasagna right now, she would probably lick it and be like. Not interested. Which we have lasagna. We could test this theory right I now. I feel like when you when you create an animal character, mm-hmm. <laughs> they have to have a favorite food. That's fine, but it should be something that relates to the character, not... Chili dogs don't relate to hedgehogs in any way. Absolutely. How? <laughs> what have you ever even seen a hedgehog and a Do chili you know dog in the same made place? Out of? Hedgehogs? There you go. That is false. That is true. Nobody's eating hedgehog chili. I bet it's been made. Why would Sonic eat hedgehog chili? Uh, why does dogs eat dog food? <laughs> why does dogs eat dogs <laughs> foods? <laughs> I got to know. No, because the turtles have pizza. Yeah, which makes sense. Does it? Well, because they live in New York and lots of pizza falls down the sewers. So <laughs> 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 lots of pizza falls down the sewers. Um, I don't know, man. Why does he love lasagna? I bet there's a an origin behind that. There's an probably origin. A, like a um, that's not the word. It's probably a story. There's probably mm-hmm. a reason why. I bet there's a gritty, dark alternate comic. Mm. This graphic novel. Mm. It's called Garfield the Cat Without a Lasagna. <laughs> a lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe maybe that's the last meal he ate with his wife who was brutally murdered by the mob that he owed money to. Cat mob or was he human? Uh, he was human. Mm-hmm. And then he was oozed. Oozed. The last thing he had touched was a cat uh-huh. and a lasagna. <laughs> what if... I like this because what if he was a fat Italian guy before and his favorite meal was lasagna? So okay. then when he touched All the right. cat and the ooze hit him, right? He became a cat and somehow got involved. John must have been his John. Where does John come into play? Where does John come into play? Do you think John was part? John's of completely unrelated. I think he's just uh, the unsuspecting owner of a new uh, okay. ex mob cat. Ex mob cat. Ex mob member cat. So why don't you think Garfield tries to... you a member of the mob? Is that the right word? Well, it depends what his position is. Join up. (laughs) Join the club. I'm here for the mob party. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. So that's that's what we're going with. He was an ex... I think that's the answer. Yeah, I think he was um, a large lasagna-loving Italian man. Mm -hmm. Garfield. Garfield and uh, <laughs> and uh, then his wife. Which I apologize to any mobsters in the audience. Um, I don't know the ethics or if you would actually go after someone's wife. Um, um, depending on how I feel like you would threaten one's family at some point, right? Yes, and if it got bad enough, I guess you would kill yeah. the wife. Which is really messed up. That's dark. Um. But then the ooze thing happened, which that was, he was just... So he's in New York? He's got to be. Okay. He was at the time. Mm-hmm. But he, he, when he becomes Garfield, what happens? Do they pick him up and... Uh, well, he finds it? John. Yes, but how? Single guy. <laughs> just looking for a cat. He's like, this is the guy I need to help me get this back is to a my, guy. my body. <laughs> <laughs> he's stupid. Um, how did he find him? Mm-hmm. John was out one night picking up Chinese food mm-hmm. that he called in. Yes, trying to pick up his lady friend that he can never pick up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, Garfield ran out in front of him and pretended to be sick and cold. Uh huh. And uh, that's when John took him home. Okay. And then one day just gave him lasagna. Or do you think Garfield uh, yeah. like whispered to him like lasagna? He may have, but again, we don't know if if. If when he does that, John's hearing lasagna, mm-hmm. or if he's hearing... <laughs> that was kind of close. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a fun game. Yes. Try to say... I love it. Garfield. Uh-huh. Okay, hang on. Let me see if I, I can articulate this. You ever have game. something go on in your head, and then you try to articulate it, and you're like, nope, I shouldn't That's have That's how ever. I speak all times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 
One day I realized the 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 name Garfield. Mm-hmm. It, like, how do you say Garfield? Garfield. Three syllables or two? Garfield. Garfield. Yeah. Right. Three. Uh-huh. But the second half or the second bit of Garfield okay. is the word field. Right. So it should be Garfield. <laughs> so try to say Garfield and not have that third syllable come out. So Garfield. I'm still hearing the three (laughs) syllables because I'm just trained to hear that name as Garfield. 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 Don't put that space there. You're cheating. Garfield. 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 (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, when you put it close together, it's like... That last... Field. Garfield. 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 I'm it's still <laughs> hearing the third syllable. <laughs> I'm trying to say it fast so it sounds like Is it's not Is that just there. a brain thing? Because you only hear the word field as a single syllable? Unless we were taught that, like, in the English language, when those letters come together, it just has to make that yield sound. Like, yeah, that's one syllable, right? Gar- yield? But Garfield, I can only ever Garfield. hear a... Garfield. S- <laughs> that's such a stupid <laughs> thing. Garfield. Like you... Garfield. Yeah, you just put the emphasis Garfield. on the wrong part. Garfield. It sounds like it just comes out. I can't tell if it's something. Garfield. <laughs> Garfield. Go around. Go around. I can't tell if it's something my mouth's doing or my ears are hearing. I think it's your ears are hearing. I, I think so we're too. saying it right, but our brain. Like I know that when I say Garfield, yeah, I emphasize that last syllable because mm-hmm. I'm used to saying it with three syllables. Yeah, but if I try to not. I still hear the three syllables. Now, do you think that's like a New England thing? Like you, if you say it in a southern accent or a um, Garfield or like <laughs> or a uh, valley, um, you know, I'm talking about Californian accent. Oh, uh, valley girl. I don't know. I, I was going for Garfield. Or what if you say it like in the Russian? I don't know. How to do or or uh, in English. Russian Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> I don't know. That's a weird one. That's a weird one. And now it's weird to say because we said it so many times. I know. So I was just like, thinking that. I don't want to say it anymore. Garfield. Ah. <laughs> Did it make you freak out a little? A little bit. Well, welcome to the Gar field. Gar field. Yes. Football field. Field. Football, Football field. Football Garfield. <laughs> Garfield. 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 Gar- Garfield field. Garfield field. That's weird. Garfield field field. Garfield Field, Garfield. Gar, Garfield. Gar, what? Carfield. Carfield. Gar, Garfield's Carfield. Card feels like Garfield's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are we going into? Uh, We're talking I, about <laughs> I have uh, um, Oh, you know what? Yeah. Let's go into. I do have to go on television. Hmm? I do have to go on television. Me too. Okay. But I want to go into technology first. Okay. So we do a little backtrack? No. Technology is after stupid questions? Yes. First I've heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. guess we're going to technology. All right. Technology. All right. Um, <clears throat> I will be brief. Did, uh, did I ever talk about my Bluetooth headphones? I don't. On the podcast? Call. I don't think I did. I don't think. But even if I did... That's just, okay. Just a little rehash for yeah. you guys. So, <clears throat> um, back in December, mm-hmm. I ordered a pair of Bluetooth headphones. Uh, currently working in a warehouse, and all day I just got me and my brain mm-hmm. and my thoughts, and I'm just doing stuff that I don't really need to think a whole lot about. Mm-hmm. I could definitely listen to music and podcasts while doing it. Yes. So I was like, I'm going to invest in some Bluetooth headphones. Yes. And I didn't know really what I was looking for. So I found like the best selling pair on Amazon and I get it because they're pretty sweet. How would you pronounce that? <coughs> I want to say it's like Dowtronics. I would pronounce the T. Yeah. And be Towtronics. But isn't Taoism spelled T-A-O-I-S-M? Yes. But in this case. Not the. Those headphones are <laughs> support Taoism related, but um, yeah, I well, I'd say the T myself. It's T A O Tronics, all one word. Tao. Um, Bluetooth headphones, wireless in ear earbuds. Um, I picked them up on Amazon. Like I said, they're twenty five ninety nine, and these things are the jam. Mm-hmm. Um, now I bring it up 
today because I hadn't had anything to compare them to before, mm-hmm. really. They were like my first Bluetooth headphones, wireless and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Now, they're not, um, what's it called, true wireless, where each headphone is independent. I've never used any pair like that. Mm-hmm. And my main concern when buying them is that they're going to be comfortable, obviously. Like, yeah. That's a big deal because when earbuds were first like a thing. And I hated them. So uncomfortable. I love them now. I do too. I got used to them over time. But mm-hmm. yeah, at first I was like, this is just so weird because yeah. before that, uh, was there only headphones? Yeah, it was all like either overhead. So it started off like overhead headphones and then they had the ones. I remember when the headphones that came out, they went around the back and they like went around oh, your that's ear. Weird. Yeah. Do you remember those? I, I, I've never had them, but I do remember those. It was a different, and you can still get them like this, but mm-hmm. it was uh, it was just a different design. And I remember that was like the thing, like, oh my gosh, they don't just go over your head now, mm-hmm. they go behind your head. And it Ooh. eliminated all the awkwardness. You could wear a hat now yeah. while listening to headphones and stuff. Um, but yeah, when earbuds, I mean, I don't know, was it around... Like when the first iPod came out? I think so. It was definitely an Apple thing. Yeah. Just like with, uh, um, what are they using right now? The lightning cable for the uh, phone. Same thing. They were just like throwing it out there and they're like, this will get big. Yeah. And it was like, I don't know. They weren't always comfortable. They didn't always fit. My problem was like if I was wearing them while working out or doing anything active, Mm -hmm. like even like bending down to pick something up or whatever, they would just fall out of my ears. Yeah. So um, these particular headphones have that design where they wrap around your ear individually Mm -hmm. and they hold them in. And they're like the one, you know, the in my mind, it's like the original Bluetooth thing was when you would see people with the single Bluetooth headset. Yeah, it's like this little like bar. Yes, exactly. It's like a bar across your ear Mm -hmm. with the earbud on the other side of it and the hook that goes around your ear. So that's the design on these and it has their uh, wire connected. Um, Which I personally like that better because I feel like it would be easier to find them. Like as opposed to if they were just too. Too, I know. I worry yeah. about losing them too. So I like the wire better. Um, sometimes it's inconvenient, which we can talk about in a little bit. But mm-hmm. um, uh, with the pair I have, uh, like if I same situation, like if I bend over or something, sometimes the wire like gets pushed to the other side. So yes. then it starts falling out of my ear. And yeah. So it's weird how it works. I've but. had that happen too. And you have to just like pull it, yeah, pull yeah. it back to the side or yeah. whatever. So I don't know. I've never had a true wireless pair. Um, the ones I was, I was looking at some the other day. Um, they were a little pricey, but someday mm-hmm. I might invest in some cause yeah. I'm in love with Bluetooth technology. Yeah, um, Bluetooth something special. It really is. So I got these things and I love them. There are other small things about them. Like the buttons mm-hmm. are great. Um, maybe that sounds like a weird thing, but there are some designs that are just not good. Yes. Um, and they're really like not comfortable. Mm -hmm. So a couple weeks ago, unfortunately, for whatever reason, they had taken no damage or anything. I use them like daily. Mm -hmm. Um, they, I think I want to say they say six to seven hours of use straight, which I definitely use them through a full work day, like an eight hour work day and they die like an hour before I'm out kind of thing. So I just mm-hmm. charge them throughout the day. Um, but yeah, so I had them since December. And then last week or the week before, um, that terrible thing that happens with headphones sometimes, or like we've talked about the cassette adapter in a car, the left ear just went out. And I was messing with the wire. Yep. And it was coming in and out. I'm like, oh, what the hell? Like nothing had happened to it at mm-hmm. all. So I don't know why that would why that would happen. And then, um, a little while later, it just completely disconnected and when it wouldn't turn back on. Oh, that's so annoying. Yeah. Super annoying. So nothing had happened to them at all. Like I hadn't dropped them. The wires hadn't gotten yanked at all. Mm -hmm. And when you're wearing them, like all the weight is on the actual earphones. So it's not like there's any tugging happening on the wire. Yeah. Right. So I don't know what would have caused that. So, um, I will shout out, let me find the, uh, let me find the name. Um, Sun Valley Tech mm-hmm. on Amazon is the buyer I got it from. And I contacted them. They gave me a suggestion on like trying to charge it elsewhere in a yeah. different wire, which I did. And that worked. The left ear was still busted. So they're hooking it up and sending me another pair because they're uh, 12 month guaranteed. Oh, nice. So I was like, sick. Yeah. But I'm a little concerned that's going to happen again. Um, right. Because if it's faulty ones, like what stops yeah. it from... But I guess thing. as long as they keep giving break you within <laughs> 12 months. <laughs> but I was stoked. Sun Valley Tech, um, Amazon seller was pretty, pretty great customer service. And I mm-hmm. was excited about that. And I'm even more excited about that because the day that those died, I went out and got another pair. Mm-hmm. It was mid-work day. And I was like, I got some podcasts to listen to. I'm going to go to Best Buy and see what they got. 
So I found a pair. Um, <sighs> How much were they? Let's start with that. All right. So the uh, the other ones that I was just talking about, the Tautronics or whatever they're called. Yep. Um, were twenty five ninety nine, and I have Amazon Prime access, so no shipping. Mm-hmm. These ones were thirty nine ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Um, so 40 bucks mm-hmm. and Ugh. I want to find a listing because I don't have the uh, all the original packaging with me mm-hmm. so these were they're called jam transit fitness earbuds mm-hmm. same deal they're not true wireless but they are wireless so just the two um, earbuds are connected they're together not, but they are they're not but they are mm-hmm. um, and I don't know, is true wireless like a, a term for that? I saw it on one package and it made sense to me that that would be yeah, I guess a universal cause, term. Because in a sense, this is totally wireless. Yeah, these are these say wireless on the package. Yeah, so true wireless is like actually like literally no Literally there's wire. no yeah. wire yeah, involved. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, such a weird thing. We have to get I, that specific. I know. Well, as <laughs> things evolve, it's like it's so interesting. Yeah. So um, the there were a couple versions. One of them uh of the jam transits um one that was on the shelf were waterproof Mm -hmm. and the other pair which are the ones that i got are um ultra light which you can feel them they're like crazy crazy light wow yeah um when you put them on you barely feel them Mm -hmm. although so these ones don't come with the hooks on the ears they come with attachments so like these have if you're watching the video you can see like they just snap off oh okay and so you can use them without the hooks i wouldn't do it i don't know if it's the shape of my ears or what but i know that they'll fall out like yeah it's just a weird uncomfortable yeah thing. these uh ear hooks look a little small too they they bend all right but if you don't have them at the right angle on your ear they yeah. do get a little painful because they'll like dig into you mm-hmm. so you have to make especially i'm wearing them for long periods of time yeah so they are crazy light and they sound pretty good that's the other thing with the tautronics mm-hmm. is they sounded amazing yeah um now here's the button issue i was talking about when you're wearing the ones with the tautronics you by the way i'm just going to switch up how i say that every time <laughs> um <coughs> and picture like we were talking about the bluetooth where it's like a straight bar across yep. you I'm going to try to describe this as best as I can, (laughs) but if it's straight across, right? So you put, imagine you're wearing them Mm -hmm. and it's on the right ear. So your thumb is underneath it. So you can put pressure on the top. All three buttons are across the top. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's really easy to access the buttons. There's only three. Yeah. The forward most one is, uh, I'm trying to remember now. I think it's the middle ones, play, pause, answer your phone. Um, I'm talking about on the other one. Oh, okay. Uh, these ones, these ones are different. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's one that's, uh, it's play. You answer your phone, yep. pause, um, hang up. And then there's, um, uh, volume, volume up, up and down, down yep. hold it. It skips a track, yep. blah, 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 same and so on and so forth. These ones, um, so picture the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's like a cross. The buttons are like if the earbud is in your ear the buttons are all facing out away from your head okay so they're not on anything in order to press them you have to like push them push it into your head oh it's like a terrible design yeah and so you have to try to get your thumb like under it while you're wearing them Mm -hmm. or take it off and yeah because the idea is like if you're turning up volume obviously if you push it into your head more you get a louder volume anyways. and it's gonna hurt like yeah, you shouldn't oh, yeah. be jamming your headphones in your exactly head. it's like, like putting uh <laughs> q-tips in your ear or whatever yeah, it's exactly. like something you're not supposed to do yeah they're so. supposed to hold in there like in a comfortable safe way yeah so that's a little frustrating and i notice it a lot because i wear them at work if somebody <laughs> walks up to me i immediately pause yeah that's what i had to do i'm like Ugh. yeah exactly so but uh the other thing about these is the play button doesn't pause anything um so I actually have to go to my phone and select pause oh. with these. And I also, this I could be wrong with, but I don't think the volume buttons work. skip tracks. Oh. They work, but they don't skip tracks. So, which I feel like a lot of the function for these is working out. And yeah. like people, like that access is like a really important yeah, part. Yeah, the idea is to not access your phone basically. Be yeah. able to do everything you need through the headphones. Just through the headphones. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they are super light, like I said, and they sound great, but mm-hmm. comparatively... I'm so stoked to get the other pair back. Yeah. Um, the comfort other thing, wise, are they more comfortable? Comfort? No, I think the other ones were. All right. The other ones were heavier. Mm-hmm. You can feel the weight more, but um, but they're super comfortable. You kind of these ones, I will say, you kind of forget they're there. Okay. Because they're so light. Yeah. But with everything else, I don't know if they're more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um. 
I don't know. Now I'm kind of thinking about it because they they are so light. That's like the the main thing. When I put them on first, I was like, oh yeah. snap! But it like, is missing features. The features are. I mean, I would trade those for sure. But I'm yeah. trying to think. Like maybe I answer too quick because these are pretty comfortable. But the other ones aren't uncomfortable at all. Mm -hmm. And even though the hooks that go around the ears are thicker, yeah, they're not like they don't hurt by right. any means. So um, these ones you barely feel. But if you have them on wrong, mm -hmm. you feel them in a bad way. Uh, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Um. So I'm kind of stoked that I'm going to have two pair because I will say the mic on these is really good. Oh, okay. Um, because I have used it for phone calls and stuff like that. Um, the, cool. I didn't even know it had a microphone. Yeah, on. yeah. A, a lot of them do. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm stoked to have a couple pairs because now I'll probably keep one in my backpack, one in my car or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing about these ones, these jam transit ones, mm -hmm. is the distance. It says it's up to 30 feet of distance. Um 30 that's redundant up to 30 feet of uh what's the word like you can be 30 feet away yeah and like still be connected Bluetooth connectivity or yeah whatever. i guess connectivity is the word i'm looking wow. for i don't know um range okay 30 foot range yes um <laughs> <laughs> but uh it's definitely not nearly as good as the other pair that i had mm -hmm. the Tautronics. Tal um Tal because those i again I'm in, I'm in the same workspace that i was yeah and i would walk down like four aisles and still hear everything fine on yeah. these i just turn around and walk in the other direction and it starts cracking up so right i away. wonder if that's something to do with the the bluetooth that they have installed on it like it's just not a it's possible good working receiver or whatever it's possible or what's the opposite of a receiver sender uh, <laughs> uh what is the word for that i don't know I don't know either. Everything just receives nowadays. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Always take, take, take that's, with these electrons. That's, <laughs> that's all they ever do. Um, these ones are also uh, supposed to be sweat resistant. Yes. I don't know how to judge that other than I've been sweaty while wearing them before and they're and not broken. And they still work. So, so. Um, so these aren't awful. Mm -hmm. And if someone were able to find these and needed a pair of headphones, you could do it. But if you can wait like a couple of days and you have Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. T A O Tronics. If you look up those headphones, plus the price difference alone, yeah, that, that I one mean, was an extra fifteen bucks. Yep. So, yeah. um, yeah, it just seems smarter to look elsewhere. Right, and it's a weird toss up at this point because I don't know. I mean, those only lasted. I've had them since December. Mm -hmm. So what is that? Eight months, give or take. Um, yeah. So, and nothing happened to them. If yeah. they suffered any kind of trauma, mm -hmm. as some of my things do, um, that would be one thing. But I don't know why they cut out. So we'll see how this next pair is. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. I've been really stoked on random little pieces of tech lately. <laughs> so I wanted to go ahead and compare those while yeah, I could. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess that's all I got in tech. Do you have anything? No. Uh, TV? TV. Sweet. Television. All right, I have one thing I got to hit in TV, but you can go first because I just talked, talked. talked <laughs> tech for a while. Well, mine's just like a quick, um, I don't even want to call it a review, like a, a midway review, I guess. A midway review. Midway review. So I am currently a little less than halfway through Iron Fist. Iron Fist. Iron Fist. I should have known. Um, <sighs> All right, first. Yes. Can you, well, maybe that's a thing for later. Never mind. Carry on. Okay, so. Remind me I had a thing. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so my initial impression, yeah. I was impressed. I mm. actually, I have heard nothing but bad things about it. Mm. Um, they said like the first episode was terrible. There's, there's just nothing going on and mm. stuff. I liked it. I was hooked. I, I was interested in the characters, the story they were setting up. I do like the connections to like Chinese mythology and yeah, uh, yeah. like various monks and all this stuff. And that's just because I really like uh, Asian countries and all that stuff mm. anyway so it interests me uh, and the kung fu aspects I mean for sure you can't go wrong um, but as I progressed through it uh, like not that it it's not capturing me as much it's like really it was almost like the honeymoon phase like like I'm uh, I'm huh. current yeah like it's I don't know how to explain it but there's just noticeable like it almost seems like lazy filmmaking that I've noticed interesting why i just i would expect that it would go the opposite way where it would get better it would get better and, and there are aspects that are interesting there are like little threads of story that are getting better but there are just certain things like like for instance the action it's getting progressively worse in my opinion throughout Ooh. as as we go on 
Um, there's one character I can't remember her name, but she's like the Japanese um, dojo instructor. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, can't think of her name because you guys know how bad I am with names. But um, <laughs> she started off and she had a pretty cool fight scene early on. Yeah, um, in just, the first episode. Yeah, uh, yeah. first or second? I, I don't remember. I watched them together, but I watched one like a year ago so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah she had a pretty cool fight scene um, but she gets more fight scenes as the story progresses but for some reason it never looks like her fists and stuff connect like I don't know if oh. that has to do with the um, choreography or if she is not like a really good fighter or something like I don't know what it is but like a lot of it you just see like a quick like I'm showing you in the video, but basically she gets like that close, but it's mm -hmm. super noticeable that, you know, she doesn't hit the guy. So it's like an old episode of power Rangers. Yes, pretty much Their Their limbs are flying around, but nobody's hitting anybody. Huh? Um, so it was just like notice noticeable. And especially when they put in the, like the punch sound effects, I'm like, this is just so like weird. It's just throwing me off. Um, strange. Do you think they're going for like an old school feel? Like, no, cause if they were, they would have been more ridiculous with it. I think. Yeah. Um, but uh, and the same with Danny, uh, the main character of the yeah. show. He uh, he has a few fight scenes and the same thing. They're like not they don't look as powerful as the hits, like as the guys react to it. Mm. So like there's a shot where he like grabs a guy and knees him in the face. Um, but the guy reacts like his face just got exploded. But the attack itself does not. Pretty look, weak. Yeah, it doesn't look like. Well, that that's like the Luke Cage effect, in, in my opinion. Yeah, that's, that's how I felt about a lot of those fight scenes. I I chalked that up to like. Just the difficulty of showing a man with his strength yes. fighting a bunch of guys. Mm -hmm. But there were a couple moments where I was like, uh, yeah, just like, a little. And it was the same thing. It was guys overreacting mm -hmm. to like a hit or a th being thrown or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like too anticipated or something. Yeah, exactly. Like the guys obviously knew it was coming. Mm. They were acting and stuff, but they just didn't act well. Hmm. Um, so and I think a show that's mainly focused on Kung Fu should have really good yeah. Kung Fu. Yeah. Um, so that was a little concerning. I mean, that hmm. being said, I'm only on episode five out okay. of 12, 12 or, or 13 or yeah. something. Um, so there's still plenty of room for improvement. Mm -hmm. And it is like uh, most freshman TV shows. You know, the first season could sure. be great or terrible. Um, and yeah. They, they right. just need to get their bearings, you know. Yeah. Um, so that being said, the story, I'm certainly interested. There's a lot of aspects with the hand that they're developing on. Okay. Showing people that are connected to it and how much of a threat they are. Um, so that's super interesting because they've been, like, alluding to it throughout all the all the shows. You know, right, Daredevil right. Daredevil and stuff. So um, that's exciting to hear about. Um, and there is, like, there's a lot of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, uh, businessy aspects to it like okay. it's as compared to other marvel shows like this has a more um there's a show i'm trying to think of uh, like blue collars or um like a law and order type of show where there's okay. a lot of just a lot of like a lot of suits yeah a lot of suits a lot of business discussion like that type of stuff interesting um business espionage like all that kind of stuff okay um so that's interesting because it's certainly like you know each show has kind of had their own theme to it like Luke Cage with the yeah. hero of Harlem and like, uh, you know, the African American community influence. This one yeah. has more of like a business and Chinese influence and like, like corrupt. Yeah. Like business. Cor yeah. Corrupt stuff. business. And he obviously is like going in li not a major spoiler, but the idea is basically he wants to get his company back. Right. Um, and no, that's like first episode. Okay. Was, that's, yeah. He, well, cause I think in the first episode he wasn't super interested, but as the series goes on, he's like, Oh wait, I actually do want this. All right. Now you're spoiling it. And I'd <laughs> like you to relax. <laughs> okay. I'll calm down. But so it's his perspective of like, no, we should give this away for free or we should be nice with this as opposed to the, you know, the guys in suits who are like, no, we just want money. So yeah. all those people can suffer. So, you know, there is a lot of cool elements, but it's losing me a little bit. Hmm. I'm going to finish it, obviously, because Defenders comes out, I think, next week. <laughs> second week of August. And I heard... Up to do. Yeah, I heard he... Uh, Danny has... A, like He's like the main focus of it. Like, like everyone... Of Defenders? Yeah, like, you know... Interesting. Yeah, like everyone gets their own screen time, like they're yeah. the average amount and everything, but they focus on him, from what I've heard, at least in the first four episodes. Um, and it's a miniseries. It's only eight episodes. Defenders? Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, Iron Fist is 13. I was mm -hmm. just looking, so you still have a good amount of yeah. episodes to watch. So I'm still with it, but it is. It's funny. I had the opposite effect to everybody else. They didn't like the first episode, and then. Said it got better. Yeah, over time. But some people just totally bailed. I mean, the thing that sucks is in comparison, mm -hmm. like, 
we I think everybody agrees Daredevil was insane. Oh like, yeah, it was just the best, the best. Top and notch. then Jessica Jones, like I couldn't stop watching. Like I watched those episodes end on end because yep. it was just so intriguing. It, exactly, that's the word for it. Too. And it, yeah, and it just like it pulled you in. And mm-hmm. then I felt the same way. I mean, Daredevil two was crazy, and yep. then the Punisher thing again, like the intrigue and the story unraveling and it's like an episode ends and you're like, what? Like, yeah. It's like, that's, stop. <laughs> you know? So, and then I felt, I felt the same way with Luke Cage. Luke I, Cage was tough, but uh, like after I think the third or fourth episode, mm-hmm. I, I was hooked. I was like, yeah, I, I'm liking this. I think I had so much interest in it cause it was so different that like the first few episodes, I mean, I didn't think it had any of that. I didn't think it suffered from being a new show at all. Really. No, it didn't have that um, like first season. Yeah. Uh, trying to get their footing yeah and i didn't think daredevil or jessica jones did either really. no not at all which is very surprising that iron fist is this way i think that's why people reacted the way that they did too yeah because it. it has a little bit of that like oh just stick with it mm-hmm. and the other ones were just like boom we're yeah. amazing they you know? hit it's you like, hard so i don't i don't know it's yeah very i guess because maybe those felt more <coughs> like um movies and this they one did this one feels like a show more yeah i would say yeah that's what i think yeah um and so, uh, but yeah, I'm still going to stick with it. Yeah. Um, I still think there's potential after I saw the first, definitely the first two episodes, mm-hmm. I was like, this is pretty good. This might like be high up on the list for me of mm. shows. Um, but like I said, as I watch more episodes, just things started getting worse for some Strange. reason. Strange. Um, doesn't mean don't watch it. Everyone should totally no, watch I'm it. I'm going to watch it for sure. Just I'll... to form their own opinion. Right. First and foremost. But, uh, and maybe it does get better. I, I'm going to watch it more and then be able to do a full synopsis, but right. Um, yeah, maybe next time we talk about it, we will both have seen it. Cause yeah. that's, I'm trying that's... to watch two episodes a night Okay, to see, and if it gets real good, maybe three. Or yeah. Four, right. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on when you start it. Yes. Um, so I'll stay on the Marvel tip and I'll say that after, uh, D 23 mm-hmm. and all the announcements for the new Marvel stuff coming out, I was like, man, I need to start catching up on things. So, mm-hmm. um, Rachel, my wife and I have mm-hmm. been catching up on agents of shield yeah. And I just want I know we've talked about it in the past. I no spoilers here or anything. Mm-hmm. We're on season 4. I just wanted to bring up that I've been with this show like since season 1 dragged a little bit early on. Yeah. Every I think everyone would agree. But hands down one of my favorite twists. One of the most amazing like I <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. I don't, it's just unbelievable. It's like good. it's so out of nowhere. <laughs> and such a big ripple throughout the entire series Everything. was that one episode. Right. Um, and this show, at least for me, has been consistently hitting it out of the park with these twists, with these, yeah. turns, with these story elements that mm-hmm. keep getting thrown in. I'm like, holy crap. That's so, what's crazy to me is I think from that moment, and it's before that moment too, because you start to kind of fall in love with the, the characters yes. and stuff like that. Um, but early on, I think everyone just kind of felt like, ah, oh, this just kind of feels like a, Marvel does Law and Order or yeah, um, yeah. or uh, Criminal Minds or something like that, you yeah. know, um, which shows like that are great. But this is at the peak of Marvel, you know, the MCU. And mm-hmm. um, so people were like a little unenthused, yeah. underwhelmed maybe. But then as it worked up and that twist and everything, I've been in it. So mm-hmm. um, and, and and like you said, I think it's it's always delivered. I mean, one of the finales was one one of my favorite maybe favorite finales of any show like season finales and then there's that one episode that we always talk about where there's a certain character spends an entire episode in this new setting that we've never seen before and it's just incredible the Mm -hmm. show's done a lot of amazing things yeah so here we are in season four and we're watching it there are i want to say 23 episodes that's solid in this season Mm -hmm. um i'll confirm that but um what is crazy is we were probably we had stopped on i don't know we've probably watched six or seven episodes within the past week or two Mm -hmm. and um hang on i just want to see how many episodes there are because what's interesting to me is this episode that we just watched yes there's 22 episodes in this season we we just watched uh episode number 15 all right um called Mm self-control this episode is so intense i like seriously at the end of it we were i mean we both almost cried at one moment there is like this uh it just the show takes this violent turn into being this like very high stakes sci-fi thriller okay and the whole episode has this like like really heavy tone and the stakes are so high Mm -hmm. like 
what is happening? Everything just changed. And um, I don't know. So this particular one was written by Jed Whedon. Um, oh, okay. So I don't know if the Whedons just have this bone in their body that allows them to create these like <laughs> sci-fi thriller masterpieces. Yeah. But this episode was unbelievable. And it's literally so like... And and I, I bring up that there's 22 episodes because it's not like it's a finale. It's not even a pre-finale. Mm-hmm. It's like... Just a random episode. It's just an ep- episode 15 yeah. of season four. I think I that's like, when the big twist in season one was as well. I think episode It 15. makes sense because they're you're kind of like cresting and then... It's like the you know, climax you got, yeah, and then you're... In you the, got to bring it home within yeah. the next... I mean, that's still seven episodes. That feels lot. like a lot, you yeah. know? Um, but what they've set up in this episode, there's still a lot to deal with before the season can end for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just, I just wanted to call attention to that episode, um, 15 of season four. I was just like, good just Lord, mm-hmm. this, like it ended and Rachel was just like, whew, that was intense. And I was like, seriously, that wasn't just me. Right. And then we just started going through the scenes that yeah. like when this happened and when this person did this and like, it was heavy mm-hmm. and and the way it ends is just like, wow. <laughs> I love that when you're almost tired after watching an episode because it just puts you on an emotional roller coaster. It really did, dude. There were tears and mm-hmm. and I, there was blood and twists and major things with major characters. And you just didn't see it coming because we're just mid-season, yeah. you know, like, and uh, it just was working episode oh, to episode. Yeah. yeah. And what was a bummer is that is a night I would have wanted to watch like two more, mm-hmm. but we just started it way too late. It was already getting into the wee hours of the morning. Yeah. So we had to cut it there. Um, But man, what an episode. And I'm, I'm just glad like it's so far along now that it's, it's interesting to think back to earlier seasons and realize that I've been watching this show for, almost four full seasons yeah. you know um because i remember when it came out i was like i don't know if it's gonna last people right. aren't really loving it you know mm-hmm. but i'm really glad that it has and it's really really good it is um, it's a very neat show it is a show i feel comfortable four seasons in mm-hmm. i would tell someone like no just commit start yeah. at episode one and catch up because it's it's that good it's so good mm-hmm. <laughs> i love it dude i'm totally with you yeah are you caught up where are you uh the start of season four so i haven't even started of season four yeah, okay the first episode so dude it's an interesting season. It's very interesting. Mm-hmm. It, you know, because the show is in the universe that it's in, they kind of can pull from many different directions and well, aspects. Well, yeah, one of the big things this season was Ghost Rider. Yes. Um, and that is such a departure from, because in the past seasons we dealt with like aliens and espionage and uh, superheroes and all this stuff. So to go to Ghost Rider, which his connection is with hell. So it mm-hmm. takes a much more, I assume, spiritual yeah root. um and so it's crazy how diverse they can get with their storytelling you know right being able to reach like now they can reference hell and it's like oh man it's an actual place no, there's like, that yeah and all this stuff and obviously i haven't seen it but just knowing that it it's gonna make it so much more interesting yeah and i mean something like that can open doors to many more characters mm-hmm. um and just as i don't want to make this spoilery at all but something interesting about this season mm-hmm we're past you know mid-season at episode 15 and i realized like this episode like ghost rider is not even it's gone a thing right now yeah and uh i'm not saying whether that's good or bad right. it's just we're now in something else completely and you're episode. you're in like their own story involving the yeah characters and, and ghost it's like, Rider's, like doing whatever he's yeah. Doing. yeah yeah so this season is a ride dude mm-hmm. like it's and the ghost rider stuff's really cool um but yeah, you should definitely try to catch up because it's it's on Netflix, right? The whole season. Yeah, the whole yeah. season. That's what we're doing right now. Um, catching up on Netflix, and then I think I'm gonna jump to Iron Fist. Yeah. Um, and I want to sneak Castlevania in there. Yeah, that one's a short one. So yeah, totally worth a watch. Um, but that's it. That's all I got in TV. Yeah, me too. Um, I have no movies this week. Me neither. I did watch Mortal Kombat for a little bit the other day. <laughs> Just a wee bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know what it is about that movie. It's <laughs> so funny. It's certainly something. Uh, I have video games, so we can jump into that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Video games. All right. Video James. Video James. Um, okay. It's everyone's favorite time of the month. Games with gold for oh, Xbox has been announced. The month. All right. And PlayStation Plus. Right. Yeah, whatever. Those are good games. I know, but I don't have a PlayStation, so I have to act like it's on purpose. What? That I don't have one. Like, I don't like PlayStation. 
but you will love it. I'm embarrassed, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was your choice. You wanted to get the Xbox. I did want an Xbox. All right, let me get to the grimy good games. Triple G. S- speaking of grimy good games, yep. Slime Rancher. I don't know what that is. Me neither. All right, moving on. I think <laughs> from what I've seen in the pictures, it's like a slime ranching game yes <laughs> i think you like grow slimes and use them to fight other slimes and like create an animal slime kingdom it looks kind of like <laughs> minecraft <laughs> oh i'm not a minecraft guy i think anyways i could be way off you're looking it up right now now so. this is on xbox yes okay no, it, ki- oh kitties yeah see there's like slime kitties and i don't know you do stuff in it look yeah. at those little slime balls i, I don't mean, know it's I a g- game <laughs> <laughs> it's free. It looks, um, it looks cute. It, yeah, it's very cutesy, very colorful. Ooh, a gun. Yeah, he's got a gun. So maybe you kill the slimes, but see, they're like in cages. Yeah. So maybe you fight slimes. I don't know. Slime rancher. Slime rancher. Anyways, let's get to something more interesting. Um, Trials Fusion is the second game for Xbox One. That sounds familiar. That's the motorcycle physics-based um, side-scrolling driving game. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. fun. Fusion was really good too. It has a lot of elements of um uh like a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It it has a big like creation elephant. Yeah, elements. <laughs> Anyways, it has this big community of uh people who can create custom maps and it leads to so many of ridiculous. There's like first person horror there's like marble blast ultra type games what? there's mazes there's cuz they figured out a way where they can like focus the camera on an object and give you the ability to control the object so yeah there is a main story there's multiplayer there's sure. all this stuff but i think the shining moment of this game is the community maps interesting cuz it's it's endless possibilities that um, sounds it's great. Like a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. I mean, but the game itself is really cool. It's like a platforming motorcycle game. Um very difficult, um, but a blast. I, I had a great time with it. And this is the third one in the trial series, so Okay. But you don't need the story. This one actually has more story than the other two, and it's not even really Yeah, that's story. weird. I don't even think of it as having a story. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's all arcade fun. Um next, this is a three sixty game. Okay. Bayonetta. Oh, sweet. I've never played it. It's so excellent. I'm excited. Yeah, this is from the creator of Devil May Cry. Oh, yes. Um, And it is, I mean, way down that alley. It's a third-person action brawler beat em up um, And it's really good. <laughs> I'm stoked about yeah, that. Yeah, it's got a great soundtrack. Very weird story, but that's the yeah. typical Japanese style. Hair clothes. Hair clothes, yes. Yeah. The more you get hurt, the more your hair disappears and the more naked she becomes right but she's never fully naked right not until the sequel anyways really that's on the wii u weird nintendo oh yeah we've talked about that it's very <laughs> strange but i don't think she gets naked in that one either anyways very good game i loved it <laughs> um and the third or fourth one the last one yeah uh red faction armageddon wow pretty cool um i believe let me see red faction yeah, so this is a departure from usual Red Faction because, you know, older Red Faction's first-person shooter. Yeah. This one's a third-person destructathon is what I want to call it. What the heck is a destructathon? Uh, basically where you go around and can destroy any environment to help you survive. But Sounds I, pretty cool, I, I guess. I can't remember if Armageddon's the first one or the second one because first one's really good, second one's not good. So let me just uh, do this. Um, sci-fi games, that doesn't sound good. Sci-fi games. Is that a thing? Did sci-fi make it? I see THQ, which went out of business. So, um, Yeah, it's... I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't remember. Well, if it's the first one, it is an open-world Mars game where you're on Mars and you go around and like help these bases and fight things, third-person shooter. Does this look familiar? That looks like the second one, which is a mission-based game. Um, so you just go from mission to mission. Um, and you and said it sucks. It's not nearly as good. They kind of took away a lot of your destruction abilities, and um, yeah, I don't know. It just wasn't nearly as good as the first one, if that's the case. Well, but regardless, it's still a game that's free, and a lot of people might like it. True, truby doobies. Give it a shot. So those are the four Xbox games. Let's do the PlayStation. Hold on, let me pull them up, Brett. Van. PlayStation. 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 Play with the station. I'm gonna try to make the old PlayStation noise. Okay. And I'll do the second one. 
<laughs> no, that's Capcom. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually very good. <laughs> All <Is> right. <laughs> oh, crap. We're going to hear it, aren't we? I don't know. Um, okay, so I uh, want me to jump into PlayStation? Yes. Okay, so the first game mm-hmm. for PlayStation 4 mm-hmm. is... <laughs> oh, there's only two. Yeah, it was pretty good. All right. Um, so the first one for PS4 is Just Cause Three. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a really good game. Um, kind of frame rate issues on it, but um, this is a third person shooter where you. I butchered that. Yeah, you did. That's the thing I tried to do at the end. <laughs> That is such an interesting array of sounds. It is a lot. Like I feel like someone spent a lot of time producing. I wonder that. what they used. Mostly pots and pans, I think. <sighs> Brent. So just cause action adventure yeah. dog fighter. Yeah, actually. You do get in jets. It's like a uh sandbox open world fun game. It's really I good. I love sand. And the other one for PS4? Yeah. Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry. What is that? Which this is a standalone game that came out for Assassin's Creed 4. This is where you play as Adewale. Adewale! Yeah, yeah. Um, Where he uh, wants to liberate all the slaves. Adewale! And free the world from... Adewale! Tyranny. Adewale. Adewale! It's pretty fun. Assassin's Creed 4. Adewale! Adewale! (sighs) Look, you made the dogs bark. (laughs) Um, So, PS3, Super Motherload. I'm going to go with... I don't know this game, but I'm going to take a guess and say it is a drill mining game where you want to collect the most things and get the mother load. Super mother load. I'm going to say it's a truck racing game. Okay. (laughs) Super mother load. Super mother load is a one to four player couch co-op digging adventure game. Oh! (laughs) Uh, Let's see. I knew it. Uh, The cover looks extremely basic. Silly. (laughs) Well... You guys can have fun with that on your PS3 because yeah. I know that's what everyone's looking for. It's um, an Adobe Flash game. <laughs> is it? That's what it says. Okay. I'll play it. Uh, <laughs> so the next game is Snakeball. I'll let you go first this time. Uh, Snakeball mm-hmm. is a game in which um, the you play Snakeball. Okay. I'm going to go with it's a snake clone except the balls are the enemies. Snake Ball is a downloadable PSN game on the PlayStation Store. It is a 3D remake of the video game Snake. <laughs> Snake Ball was developed in collaboration between the British Gamula Soft mm-hmm. and the Norwegian Rabin Studio. Did Are you know that already? No, I don't know any of these. Dude, why? <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh, are the balls the enemies, though? Yeah, uh, sure, it looks like it. I mean, I think that's what oh, yeah. at right there. That actually looks pretty fun. It does look pretty grooves. Oh, um, okay, so the next one is uh, PS Vita and cross by with PS4, so you can okay. play it on both. Uh, uh, it's called Downwell. I know what this one is, but go ahead. Downwell, I'm going to say, is some kind of Western game <laughs> <laughs> where you shoot stuff. It's a game where... Nailed uh, it. Yeah, you really, you had it. 10 out of 10. Holy Christmas. It's actually pretty neat. Um, it has like the graphic capabilities of, uh, I'd say like Super Metroid or the uh, Super Nintendo era, but you basically, your goal is to get as far down as possible. Um, and think of it as like, um, what what's that iOS game that you play with the frog, but you jump up Super Frog or something? Oh, yeah. Frog Jump. I have no idea, but I know. Okay. It, it might be. I don't know what it's called, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's one of those type of games where you have to, like, slowly descend, and you get, <laughs> you've get you been staring at that for, like, 10 minutes. It's so cool. <laughs> it is. Graphically, it's very pretty. So, um, can you only... You can only... <laughs> Um, you can only shoot down. Yes. And you get, uh, depending on who you kill or what different areas you go to, you get different guns. So there's like a super laser, there's a shotgun, a machine gun, a pistol, but it's all with your feet. Um, and your goal obviously is to get as far down as possible. And the farther you get and the more points you get, you get different upgrades. You can change your colors, change the backgrounds. Oh snap. This Um, looks dope. It's really cool. It originally actually was a, uh, iPhone game. You get it on the phone. I don't know if it's free or a dollar. But it's um it was really neat. I got it because a YouTuber I watched actually suggested it, so I was like, hey, I'll get it. 
left on sale. Um, so that's cool. That's uh, going to be free because totally worth it. Two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. It's not that bad. Yeah, it's a pretty cool game. And the last one, this one's PS Vita only. Okay. Level twenty two. That mm-hmm. is where you blow up things. Uh huh. To um get twenty two dollars. All right, I'm going to say it's an escape room game where you're in an elevator and you have to hit level twenty two to beat it. Man, that one sounds so much better. <laughs> um, level twenty two PS Vita. He's looking it up, folks. Uh, yeah, sorry for the silence. I accidentally looked up level twenty two pavilion. Of course, level twenty two action game for PS Vita console. Explore level. All right, just tell me what it is, though. The I mean, other ones just came right up and yeah. told me what it was. And that one. Are they in an level elevator? Two. Is good? They, uh, uh, no. I didn't know that one, folks. I'm sorry, I failed you. Uh, well, let me, let me, uh, let me. Uh, Hurry up, Brett. The camera's about to die. No, I'm trying. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, now it's telling. Oh, no, well, those are your PlayStation games. Now it's just telling me what a Vita is. <laughs> I don't know. Y'all are going to have to look this one up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Level 22. That's the mystery. It is a mystery. Oh, wait. The first stealth oh game God. set in the merciless and fren- frenetic world of work. Ga- <laughs> Gary is an office worker who oversleeps after a drunken night out on the town. I bet there's elevators. Here's where it gets tricky because yep. this isn't the first time Gary's been late for work. And he could be fired if he spotted arriving at his desk after everyone else yet again. So he'll have to prove he's smart and sneaky enough to <laughs> make his way up all the 22 floors to his office. Oh, <gasps> that's pretty close. That's dude. pretty close. Wow. Wow, indeed. That's neat. Well, folks, those are your games for the month of August on both PlayStation and Xbox. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is all luck of the draw. I'm impressed. Thanks. Um, so you do have to ascend to level 22. Yeah. Which is his office. Wow. But it's not an escape room. Well, technically you have to escape. It's each. sneaky and stealthy and... <coughs> wow. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, we got books. We. Oh, my God. We have literature. Literature. All right. Let's go. Okay. Have you read anything good lately? All right. Well, there's a transition we don't get to use very often. Yes. Welcome to the Keep Up Book Club. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Christmas, are you that far? Yeah. Is that all right? Mm-hmm. Whoa. Dude, I am really enjoying it. So is it awesome? It's awesome. All right, so I went to the library recently, mm-hmm. and Tim and I went to Bull Moose recently. As well. Which is a uh, New you. England... Uh, I, it's not even just a record store anymore. It's a so. New England entertainment store. Mm-hmm. Maine-based... Also, two locations in New Hampshire. Nice. Ooh, are there three now? Ooh. I think there's still just two. Okay. Salem and Portsmouth. Shame. But a lovely establishment. Yes. Of whom I am very fond. Yes. And they have many, many books. Many, many books. So, Tim, what'd you get? I got a, uh, a book mm. called Lone Wolf and Cub. Now, I, as a... Uh, previous employee mm-hmm. at Bull Moose had seen that on the shelf multiple times. Yes. And was real interested. It certainly that is what grabbed me because I have heard nothing about this before. Mm-hmm. So this is a manga series. I used to say manga all the time. I know I'm trying to adjust. It's not yeah, manga. It's manga. It's manga. So um let's just commit. It's manga. manga. This is the stupid word thing. Yes. You get nervous to say what you know is right. Right. Episode 59. Ninja ahead. Gaiden or Gaiden? It's Gaiden. I always say Gaiden. I know, but and it's I Gaiden. Will, forever for the rest of my it's life. It's probably even Gaiden. It's yeah. Probably oh, yeah. That. You have to like emphasize yeah. it. Gaiden. I think it's Gaiden. Mm-hmm. That's probably where the accent is on the right. den. But. Well, well, shouldn't there be a symbol or something to well, signify that? It's not Spanish. Yeah, but. I'm just saying that's probably how you pronounce it. Gaiden. It's probably Gaiden. Yeah. A den full of guys. Yeah, it's a Gaiden. Instead of a gay den. Or you're right. <laughs> well, that could also be a I den guess full so. of guys. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what, it's it's something. It's a den full of guys. Yeah. Guy den. Um. So we start with mine then. Start with yours. Okay. Lone Wolf and Cub. Now it looks like it's about a samurai. A samurai. A samurai. A samurai. Do you, uh, do you say samurai? Samurai. That's what I say. But I think samurai. <laughs> We're not getting into. That. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's samurai. There's a hard U in there. It's not hard enough. Samurai. Scarfield. That's so America. So America. Samurai. Samu. Well, you could make it like 
Samurai. Like, samurai. You could say it with the accent that you need. Samurai. Samurai. No, because now you're going to confuse me, and I'm going to always read it. All right, so, tell me about this sweet literature. This thing, <laughs> this... It's Mac- massive, dude. It's massive. It is. It's. Uh, I believe it's seven hundred pages. Holy Christmas! Yeah, seven hundred and six pages. Um, so this collects volumes one, two, and three of uh, the manga that came out. Oh, it's omnibus. Omnibus. Yeah. So there are twelve of those. Um, so there's a total of twenty-eight volumes. Wow. Um, which an average. Uh, I mean, I'll probably put a picture up here, but an average manga. Uh, I saw Kojima real quick. I oh, was, I was like, <laughs> the man does everything. He's, he's everywhere. Goseki um, Kojima. So this was initially published in 1970. Um, really? Yeah, so it's very uh, old. Um, <laughs> but that being said, it is written like a classic, if that makes sense. Just, okay. just reading it, just going through the first story i was like oh man this is yeah there's lots of ladies um (laughs) this is i can already tell just by reading the first the first page i'm like this must be a masterpiece this is probably like the highest class manga out there what is it the writing uh it's the writing it's the storytelling it's uh the art you can just tell because there's a lot of just um just blank panels you just go through and flip through like five or six pages and it's just it's just imagery. Yeah, that's all it is. And it's just like mm. beautiful landscapes or destroyed landscapes or bodies or whatever the situation is uh, set up with this story. But anyways, I'll go with the basic synopsis. This is the story of a samurai who has been uh, branded as a traitor okay. to all samurai dumb. <laughs> um, he was initially a uh, executioner for... Um, I don't remember what the highest level. It's uh, either a dynamo... I don't know how to pronounce it. Dynamo, dynamo, one of those things. Okay. Um, but think like a uh, hierarchy, but Japanese. Sure. So there's a uh, like a king, um, and then there's like all the other classes. But that's Maybe a very right. general generalization. There's so much more to it. Um, and that's one of the things with this book, is that it is uh very very Japanese. Um, so in a sense, if you're not into culturally or yes, yeah, okay. just like. There are so many words in there that it, uh, you really just get from context. They actually do have a glossary at the end of the book to explain a lot of the words that oh, they use. Oh, interesting. Um, which is super neat because they're like, uh, there's also a beginning, I think it's called a foreword at the beginning of the book. Yeah. Uh, note to readers. And it basically says there's a lot of words in here that as an American audience does not translate well. Um, so we're going to leave it in the book is what it sounds like. And then basically the context of how it's said that you, is you super get it. cool it's really cool so it's like just culturally accurate um historically it's amazing just like all the details they tell you about the japanese hierarchy and like how there's there's like the top level their hans which are like the underlings of the i believe it's dynamo i think he's the top or there's something higher than that i just love that you're having to learn this stuff as you're reading <laughs> i know that's like for real that's it, awesome it's so cool and i i have like a little base knowledge um, from high school, I remember sure. in history I learned all about this stuff. But and from all the Japanese movies I've seen and stuff, there has been oh, all this talk about it. But anyways, he is uh, the father to this young kid, the cub, as you will. Okay. And because he's like excommunicated, he has to basically protect him. Well, he, he right now he's an assassin for hire. Where I am in the book, um, he is just like on the road. A daimyo. Daimyo. Yeah. See, I. A feudal lord. Yes. Um, you know why I know that word? Why? From uh, Ninja Turtles three. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Because they go to feudal Japan. Yeah. Oh my god! And so they I have... never understood what that word was. Yeah. Because a couple people say like "daimyo, daimyo," yeah. mm-hmm. and I'm like, "What is that word?" <laughs> and I just saw it now, and all of that went through it my just, brain. It, I was like, <gasps> <laughs> "That's what they're saying." <laughs> <laughs> that movie makes so much more sense now. Wow. Um. A feudal and, lord. I'm yeah. sorry, I totally cut no, you off. No, no, I'm glad you looked it up because I'm sound idiotic saying dynamo. No, uh, I <laughs> I thought you were right. Um so yeah, looking through the glossary. But anyways, this this is just like you can tell how much it influences so many other things nowadays too. Really? Uh like I think the biggest one, at least for me, is Samurai Jack. I get like such a Samurai Jack feeling with uh the just like the landscapes the situations he's in like where he's surrounded by a bunch of guys and he slices through them real fast like it's so it's funny it's what i think all other samurai movies are like before reading this Mm. if that makes sense yeah like i think every movie or anything that has come 
Samurai Wise has has been influenced by this in one way or another. Interesting. Um, so the format of the story is uh, uh, episodic. So it's not you like do learn big things about the character. Like I said, he's he was like excommunicated and like considered a traitor. You don't learn that to like chapter eight. And he's just with his child. Yes. So uh, it's yeah, it's his son, and he has to protect him. And uh, crazy. The way they like just develop these characters is just unbelievable. Because like every episode I've uh, read, um, I don't know chapter episode, however it's situated, but um, you just learn a little more about the kid and a little more about your main character, the the lone wolf, um, and how like his name rings throughout all of Japan. Like if people are like, oh no, it's lone wolf and cub. Like and it's funny that they call him lone wolf and cub. Like that's his official title. <sighs> Everyone knows him, and some people are like, oh, I'm going to beat him because clearly he can't be as strong as everyone says. And he just has a legacy throughout the whole thing. So It's like Guts from yes, Berserk. Yes, exactly. That's, kind of, that's what that just reminded me of. Yeah, and that people compare that to this a lot. Because, really? Yeah, because um, uh, same like level of character development. Like there's like this mysterious, ridiculously strong character, and uh, you learn so much about his pain and suffering and all this stuff he goes through to get to where he is now. Um but I just it's it's unbelievable. Just written geniusly. Uh the art's amazing. It's it's violent, it's it's adult. It's I think what my idea of a manga would be, this this is it. Like it captures it. Yeah. And uh I don't know what else to say other than read it, you know. Yeah. Um but it's it's such an easy format to get into. Like there's a lot of like a lot of reading at first because you mm. do have to figure out like what are all these things like in this in this yeah, history sure. and stuff. But um, even even with that, it's so interesting, dude. I love that. I um I'm a big fan of. There's one that I read too. Uh, Blade of the Immortal. Have you ever read any Blade of the Immortal? Coughed off. Next on the list. Interesting. <laughs> so had you ever read any before? No, I never no. Even that's heard the one I suggested to you. Yeah. Right? So good and very similarly has. Mm, does that one have any words in it actually? at all i would assume so it wouldn't be a good story without it it does it does <laughs> well no i mean there was one that i read that had like pages and pages with no words at all mm -hmm. no text and um i mean i guess that happens with a lot of the fighting there's no text yeah well i was just flipping through here and like you were saying there are a few pages there are a few sections where it's just page after page where the story is strictly visual yes and i'm a big fan of those sections because it's almost like when you're reading it mm -hmm. everything kind of like comes to a still mm -hmm. and you're all of a sudden imagining so much you, like you have to apply your own sounds yes. and your own colors in this case because it's black and white yep. um, to the scenes you're seeing mm -hmm. and it's just very very interesting and when I was at uh, the library with the kids the other day um, Simi she was picking out like five books mm -hmm. to read she's been like blasting through books it's like her jam right now that's awesome so I saw this book called Quest and mm -hmm. it, was, it was a kids book and I opened it up it's all these like sprawling like fantasy adventure settings, but it's mm -hmm. these two kids going through and it's an ongoing story. Is it a graphic novel or a book? No, like it's, a novel? it just looks like, you know, it's like a hardcover um, children's book. Yeah. And uh, I guess you'd call it like young readers, okay. like, but it's not thick. It's yeah. like a kid's book, you know, mm -hmm. um, and no text throughout the whole thing. Wow. And I showed Simi and she was like, ooh. That's easy to read. And I was like, yeah. And <laughs> sure then, I was like, the story looks sweet. So I was just flipping through it and I was like, this is awesome. So the story's told with no text at all. No it's text. Like, That's really Strictly neat. images. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, there they kind of leave it up to the, the reader to make their story. Make yeah. The sound effects make all that stuff. So um, oh, that's incredible. Yeah. And I like that in the midst of a story that does have text because like I said, it kind of almost feels like it almost feels like uh, maybe you can think of an example, but you ever watching a movie and all of a sudden all the sound cuts out mm -hmm. like intention, like it was an artistic decision Yeah, that like whatever starts happening here, it's like, and then, but the, the action still keeps going or yep. whatever. And yep. it just like, that like happens to John wick a lot. Like okay. it's just, it's just, you hear like punches or, or sometimes no sound. It's yeah. just like, just him beating the yeah, and I guess Raimi kind of does it where yeah. he cuts everything except for the quick sounds. Yeah, um, or a lot of space movies. Mm -hmm. I ah, uh, that's so you know if someone gets like sucked out of a ship and it's like, ah! <laughs> it's just all nothing. of a sudden you're outside <laughs> and they're floating around. Yeah, whatever. like that. I get that same thing when you're reading through a story and all of a sudden there's nothing. Happens in The Walking Dead a lot actually. Yes. Um, I ripped through the first couple. Um, were they arcs? Oh, 
No, I'm trying to remember what their collections were called. Omnibuses. They had omnibus yep. too. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean the first one I read in like two days. Yeah. Because I just. I know. I remember flying through that. That was so many pages too. It's it was a lot. like they're really thick. that one had over a thousand, right? <sighs> yeah, it must have. Mm-hmm. I think it's like I'm trying to remember how many issues it is. Like seventy or something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know, something ridiculous. Yeah, something awesome. Maybe though. that's way off. No, it couldn't have been seventy because that'd be a lot of issues. <laughs> that's way too many. Because the second one ends. I don't know. We're not talking about The Walking Dead, but uh, that sounds really good. Yes. And I'm glad you're reading Blade of the Immortal next. I I feel like there's a really high intensity in these stories. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I remember reading Blade of the Immortal. It's just so like heavy mood wise. Yeah, it's that's that's one thing with this. Um, There's no like there's morals with this main character, but it's not traditional morals. Like, mm. like he's good in some regards, but other regards, he's like, I'm one with the demon right now. Let's do this. Like, he, sounds like Berserk too. It, to it is. Yeah, it's very and similar. Like I said, a lot of people compare it because like Berserk's, you know, up there considered one of the best as well. Um, and this, this in all sense and pur- purposes, it's epic. It is an mm. epic tale of a samurai trying to avenge get revenge whatever he's trying to do i honestly right. don't know his main goal right now he's just he's an assassin for hire basically mm. um and just the episodic storytelling is amazing because there's so many characters that get introduced like i would say about um there's probably like 30 to 40 pages per story okay um so but within that time i learned like about 10 different characters and good ba- good guys bad guys on top of that uh, explaining more about Lone Wolf and Cub, like yeah. their story, their history. Um, it's just, it's unbelievable how how easy it is to read through this. And I'm like, I know everything about feudal Japan. <laughs> <laughs> um, is um, when you say it's episodic, so is each story kind of like self contained? It's not like yeah, there's it ended here, so the next one starts here. Yeah, there's one story, uh, or I guess two stories that connect. Mm-hmm. Um, but generally, it's him like doing whatever situation mm. he's got to do. And then the next story starts with him in a new town or a new place, just walking or doing whatever it is. It makes sense with the original format release was probably like, here's a single story. Yeah. That, you know I, I mean? think that's how it was. It, uh, yeah. hold on. I pulled it up on Wikipedia, but, um, yeah, but this thing, uh, when it came out in the seventies, like it was a phenomenon. Like it was, uh, people praised it for its storytelling, for its character development, for its uh, realistic take on feudal Japan. Mm. Um, because at that time in the 70s, like talking about Japan's past is like iffy. Like they just don't like talking about certain things, certain okay. aspects, because it, you know, they kind of crumbled within the, in themselves and sure. stuff. So um, this was very like uh, eye opening to a lot of people, too. It's like a real, in a sense, a realistic, gritty version of samurai stories. So, um, I'll take a crack at the names. Yes. Story by yep. Katsuo Koike. That was beautiful. <laughs> and art by Goseki Kojima. Mm-hmm. Goseki, that sounds like Italian. It's probably Goski or something. Uh, let me see it again. Go, Goski, Goski. No, I think Goseki sounds right. Goseki? Yeah. Um, and the uh, cover art, these are out on Dark Horse. Yes. Um, so the cover art on Omnibus One is by Frank Miller. Yeah. He, um, hold on, let me pull this up. They initially re released the series uh, in the U.S. in 2000. Um, okay. Oh, actually, no. Uh, they did a American translated ed- uh, English edition by First Comics okay. in uh, 1987. And Frank Miller, he did Good a lot year. of the covers. Um, and then they re-released it in these omnibus versions uh, oh, cool. in, in 2000, and they took a lot of the covers he did for those, the first re-releases. Uh, they're adding those to these. Oh, okay. So that's what they're doing. That's super sweet. Um, and yeah, it's cool. Each omnibus has the first three volumes, uh, or not the first three, the three but it volumes. Has three volumes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they just keep re-releasing the first. People keep three buying volumes. them. I don't know why. Um, so there's 12 total, uh, totaling 8,000, I saw the number, it was like 8,200 pages or something, 8,700 pages. Wow. Um, and the series is finished, it's over, um, and which is great, I'm glad, uh, it's hard with manga to pick one up and be like, when is this going to add Naruto, yeah. like got to, I don't even know, like 79 or something Oof. volumes, which is just so many pages. That's but, a lot. Um, but regardless, this was awesome. I knew nothing about it going in, and I'm glad because it just had a cool cover and mm-hmm. interesting title, Lone Wolf and Cub. How sweet is that? So sweet. Um, but, yeah, uh, it's just, like, <laughs> it's amazing. 
So big thumbs up on that one. Big thumbs up. I'm I'm nice. gonna finish this book maybe tonight. I, I'm really into it. Um, yeah. And it was adapted, I guess, into six movies, some plays, a television series, and had a sequel series come out. <laughs> wow. So there's a lot of content there to yeah. uh, go through. But uh, yeah, it, this is just, in all intents purposes, an uh, epic. Um, and I'd say get it if you're into anything good. <laughs> just just in general and yeah next i'm gonna work on blade of the immortal once again heard nothing about this looks like another samurai epic it is and i'm excited you should be all right brett enough about my beautiful books let's hear about yours okay <laughs> quick question before we talk about your book sure why do you think they all come in that plastic um i don't know to, uh to protect the the dust covers probably Okay, that makes sense. Especially because this was in the kids section. Oh, especially for yeah. kids. Yeah, that's in the kids section. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Let's hear so about. So here's it. a story. Yeah. I was at the library with my lady, mm -hmm. and uh, the no kids ones. though. No, oh. the kids were there. Okay, kids were there. Shame. And uh, so we're walking around, and like I said, Sim was looking for. Uh, Sim is my daughter, to whom it may concern, or to whom is uninformed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just walking around looking at books because, man, you walk into a bookstore or a book aisle or a library and all of a sudden you're like, huh, <laughs> I want to read everything. everything. That's the thing. When we were at Bull Moose the other day, yeah. uh, there was just so many books and I'm like, I just want to read it yeah. all. It's something about just being around them. Yeah. And it makes me miss like Borders and like, I mean, Barnes and Noble is still around, but I've always wanted so to just go in one day at like when they open and just sit in one of the chairs and read all day, you know? I caught up to The Walking Dead doing that. Really? Back in the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I went in and I would pick up the volumes. I would chill and I'd bust through one. It's so funny that they let you read it. Like, yeah. I mean, well, not everything you can do like that. And most people like to have them. Yeah. Um, like to own the books. So but you can read it in comfort. At home. Yeah. But with the trades, like something like The Walking Dead, I could blast through one on a lunch break at work. Yeah. You know? So, but yeah, so we're walking around. We're in the kids section and I see this book on display. It's called The Singing Bones. Mm -hmm. um, and on the cover, it's, uh, y you guys can, can look it up if you're watching the video. This is what it looks like. It's uh, They're sculptures of a skull with a fox on top. Mm -hmm. And so it just caught my eye because that kind of stuff catches my eye. And it's a little bit like creepy and cute, I yeah. guess. And I was like, this is interesting in the kids section. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's by uh, an Australian author and artist named Sean Tan. And it said forward by Neil Gaiman. And oh, I'm nice. a huge Neil Gaiman fan. Yeah. So I was like, what is this? So I picked it up and I started flipping through it. And it's just single page stories like most of them amounting to about a paragraph mm -hmm. and on the opposite side um is a page with a photo of a sculpture okay um so uh it turns out this book is all sculptures inspired by uh Grimm's fairy tales oh so the entire thing is these short form versions of the tales with um, a sculpture next to it, a picture of the sculpture by Sean Tan. Okay. And the sculptures are like, they're just super gnarly. Like yeah. they're so captivating and they're really simple, but they're fantastical and weird. Mm -hmm. It's got a very like Coraline mood about it. That's what it looks I'm like. I'm trying to think of what like a Tim Burton. like. And I think that has to do a lot with the lighting. Like just totally. There's a lot of dark backgrounds and yep. uh, just like it's just a overall dark. Yeah. And the like the coloring in the statues themselves or the uh, sculptures themselves, that I should say. crazy. Yeah. So they're they're super, super wacky. And that caught my eye. I was just flipping through. And then um, the other day uh, when I, I shouldn't say the other day. I, Sorry, I was looking at these, and then my brain just went to a bunch of places. Because <laughs> it's so pretty. It's yeah. So this is what happened at the bookstore, like or at the library. Mm -hmm. I picked it up, and I was like, "What is this?" And um, and flipping through it, I was like, "All right, I'm just gonna grab this." And then, how much do you know about the Brothers Grimm? I know, like obviously, they wrote fairy tales. Um, the original fairy tales, or were they existed? They actually before? collected them. Okay. Yeah. And so. So did they rewrite them themselves so or some they okay. adapted them? Mm -hmm. Cause I know, I mean, to my knowledge, they're all just fairy tales, but either told in their original format where, mm -hmm. it, where it's more dark and more uh, dark basically, or what you go, you so tell me. <laughs> that's the other thing, right? So the forward in this is by Neil Gaiman and yes. he talks a lot about how Sean Tan captures these stories in a single, like it's one 
photograph of a, a sculpture that he made, mm-hmm. one or two pieces or however many, and it captures the story visually somehow. That's so weird. And it, it really does. I mean, flipping through it and realizing like, you know, just seeing, I've just, I lost it, but I was looking at the Snow White one. Yeah. And I mean, there's like a horror about them, but they're kind of endearing and it's it's very, very strange but very captivating and he captures an entire story in one piece of art. Mm-hmm. So um, that's the, the forward with Neil Gaiman. He talks about that. And then uh, there's a section, an introduction, how the brothers Grimm made their way into the world by Jack Zipes. Now that kind of blew my mind because I am for any who don't know, I'm a huge fairy tale fan. <laughs> I have been for, Probably forever, like since watching Disney movies as a kid. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it really hit me until I started reading Fables by Bill Willingham. Yeah. And then that I was like, oh, my gosh, I just love it's just storytelling and the ability to like translate some sort of um, I just feel like they capture the the freedom of like creativity. Mm -hmm. You can create any kind of like monster or land or whatever you want to do. And the original intent of a lot of them having some sort of like a moral or a message to convey just the whole thing is very fascinating to Mm -hmm. me and um fables is also the greatest thing ever written if you've never read it i will always just put a side note go read fables um so as such a big fan Mm -hmm. i'm reading this whole introduction about the brothers Grimm, and there's so many cool things about them i knew nothing about them Mm -hmm. so they were actually i want to give like a brief do it synopsis of like what is in maybe people listening like know more about them than I do. But yeah. first thing, like they didn't write really dark um, fairy tales or versions of them. They adapted them. The original versions were called household and children's tales. Okay. They wanted them to be family friendly. So when they were 10 and 11, they were two of six children and uh, their father died. This is the late 1700s. And their mother sent them, they were like, I don't know if it was because their father passed away, but they were seen as like very lower class. So Mm -hmm. their mother sent them away to school, to university, and they um, they excelled like crazy as uh, scholars. And they wanted to uh, they actually studied. uh, They were philologists. Are you familiar with that? No, neither was I. (laughs) It's uh, essentially the study of language. Okay. so the history of language, dialect, that kind of thing. And that is what they really went after and really wanted to do. Yeah. They wrote the first German dictionary. Like that's, what they the were heck? like that level. Like that's so what they So they were did. German. They were German. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And they, um, I didn't even know that. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they, that's like where they were at as far as being scholarly. Yeah. Like they excelled like crazy. Wow. That's scholastically. Cool. That's yeah. Awesome. So <laughs> they fell in love with, um, folk tales mm-hmm. and, they made a pact together to um, collect folk tales and adapt them into these editions to put out because they saw the stories as a way to unite their area, their region of Germany. Like okay. that was their goal was to get all of these folk tales and stories to people in a manner that whole households could read them. They, like I said, they adapted them to being like kid friendly mm-hmm. so that families could read them together and they saw them as a way the language and the stories um to like bring people together and get people on a uh, uh on like a similar path of thinking and yeah so that was their whole goal with collecting these stories mm-hmm. and i don't want to i almost want to just like read it read the whole <laughs> thing because it, it, i was like captivated i was like yeah. man this is crazy i did not know this about these guys and um but i if you can find the book and I, I, again, I found this at my local library, but I'm sure you can find it online and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, and now I kind of want to see if I can just find a book about the Grimm's because it's just like, it's just insane. I mean, they, they did so much on a scholarly level Mm -hmm. where the point of this introduction was that they were saying if they were alive today and knew that what they were famous for was their collections of folk tales, mm-hmm. they would be blown away because they published books about German linguistics, law, customs, like that is what they did. Jeez. But they were very passionate about the folk tales too. Yeah. Um, but uh, in the introduction, that it's saying that like it's been translated to something like 120 different languages, Man. Grimm's collection of fairy tales, yeah, you yeah. know? 
And the first couple editions that they put out were I very. Think I have it over there. Yeah. Yeah, you probably do have a version. I yeah. have a version of my house. Mm-hmm. Um, they they were very poorly received the first couple editions they yeah. did because people said it was too scholarly mm-hmm. but they just went right back to it they edited the whole thing again yep. rewrote some like they reworked them put it out again and it was poorly received again until um a guy in london actually uh got hold of it and illustrated the whole thing and translated it he was a translator in london mm-hmm. sent it to the grims and they saw it with pictures and like fell in love with like That's oh this is what it needs to yeah, be yeah republished it again like just put out all these different editions That's incredible and um the the last thing i wanted to to share about them that i thought was so sweet is that pact that they made so one of the grims got married the other one didn't but lived with his brother and his wife yeah and um it said in this intro that until up until they died, they had an office with desks facing one another. That's so always cool. like revising stuff and yeah, working yeah. together. And they always like kept to that pact to just continuously bring people folktales. And that was just like a passion of theirs. Yeah. But outside of it, like there's so much that they did and I didn't know about any of it, you know, Me either. And, and Rachel too, I was talking to her about it and it's like, there's a movie, the brothers Grimm. Yeah. Like, these dudes, like, they'd be like, what's a movie? You know what I mean? And, <laughs> what is And this? I think a lot of people think that they're responsible for, like, the darker versions of the tales. And honestly, I think some of them were originally, and then they adapted them. And um, in the book, it says that it wasn't until the 70s, around the um, feminist movement in the mm-hmm. 70s, because of a lot of the feminist writers who were, I don't know if they were just revising stories or bringing them back to their roots. Yeah. But that's when a lot of the darker, like, tales oh. started coming out. A lot of those roots started coming out, um, which I love reading those, too. Yeah. Uh, but it was just super, super interesting. So I was so stoked on this. And then um, I haven't gotten <laughs> too far into <laughs> the versions of the stories and the sculptures yet, but mm-hmm. just that alone. And the intro by Neil Gaiman, who's like just an amazing writer. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited to, to finish up. And so go basically all what the stories are, it's one paragraph that tells the whole story, you think? Yeah. So like right here is Hansel and Gretel. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just a portion of it. So I, I'll read you Hansel and Gretel. Um, the roof was made of cake and it tasted so good that Hansel ripped off a large piece and pulled it down while Gretel pushed out a round piece of the sugar window pane, sat and ate it with great relish. Suddenly the door opened and a very old woman leaning on a crutch came slinking out of the house. Hansel and Gretel were so tremendously frightened that they dropped what they had in their hands. But the old woman wagged her head and said, well, now, dear children, who brought you here? Just come inside and stay with me. Nobody's going to harm you. And that's all it has. Oh, And then okay. the next page is... A new story? It, well, the page next to it is the sculpture. Right, right. Which, as you can see, is horrible. Okay, so they're not the whole story. They're not the whole story. Okay. No. That's still cool, though. Like it, mm-hmm. So you get that, and then you get to see the, the yeah. picture with and it. And then it's like, uh, I don't know if it's like this is the portion that inspired it. Because it shows... Be. Yeah, I guess so. I guess that's what this is. Like looking at the Hansel and Gretel one anyways. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're not, I may have misspoke earlier. They're not, I don't know if I said they're like condensed versions of the whole stories, but mm-hmm. they're not even, they're like a paragraph from the story. Yeah. Just like a little tidbit. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's so cool. It's such a rad collection of things. It's photography, it's sculptures, it's storytelling yeah. and, uh, folk tales. What's it called one more time? Um, the singing bones by <laughs> Sean cool. Tan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's really cool reading the, uh, I think it's Neil Gaiman's um, forward where he talks about how he met the author, Sean Tan, and how his attitude is like kind of kind of quiet, mm-hmm. and uh, but how gifted he is as a writer and yeah. an artist. Um, so yeah, I would suggest it. It's very, very interesting read. So a thing that my dad said to me when I was young yes. was, you will learn something when you read, no matter what you read. And I was like, even if it's just comic books, because I was just trying to read comic <laughs> books. And he was like, yeah, no matter what you read. And he was right. Mm-hmm. Like, literally, everything has something in it. And I was thinking about when you were reading that, and you're mm-hmm. learning all the words. Yeah. What is that called? Lone Wolf and Cub? Yeah. And I was <laughs> reading this, and I learned a bunch about the Grimm Brothers. That's awesome. That is just true. Saying, like Learning stuff, it's bro. It's hard it's a hard thing because a lot of times when somebody sees someone reading a comic book, they're like, oh, he's reading a comic book. <laughs> and even reading it, sometimes you feel like you don't, I don't know, get any information from it. But Wrong. Wrong. It's wrong, Tim. Because, I mean, whether or not it's you either learn a new word, you get more about that uh, that character, that story. 
and you're seeing someone else's creativity like even that is learning stuff you know what i mean you're yeah. taking something new in it's good for you tim it is. reading's great i'm excited because i i always find it real hard to get inspired to read mm. even if it is comics even if it is anything it's yeah. like just reading to me is always like ho oh, hum i could be watching a movie i could be playing a game doing something to stimulate my mind more but i know this is manga but it's still very stimulating to yeah. read it's still a lot to read and it's i don't know i'm just excited i'm passionate right now yes <laughs> passionate speaking of passionate yeah, yeah. august 15th sonic mm -hmm. mania comes out oh and it's got sonic music that i'm real excited for <laughs> <laughs> new music for new you. music yes i'm excited and on top of that i got this uh bootleg dreamcast game okay it's it's so <laughs> stupid but what it's it? <laughs> so it's a sonic oh well actually it's a like collection of a bunch of genesis games okay um, but on top of that it has a huge collection of sonic uh um fan games um, okay. So a lot of it is like Sonic 1, 2, and 3 redone with new levels or new characters or all this stuff. What? Um, so I was playing one the other day. I think it's called Sonic ZX, I think. Incredibly difficult but really cool. Well, so what is it? Like so it's, it's Sonic 1. Um, but with new sprites, um, Sonic looks more like Sonic Advanced Sonic. Oh. And he has new moves. So instead of just, you know, running, obviously, in Sonic 1, you have the ability to do this. Um, uh, it's like his homing dash. You know, okay. He, yeah. In other Sonic games. I'm familiar. Jump. Okay. Uh, but it's like that. But instead, he just automatically jumps and propels himself forward. So instead of doing the spin dash on the ground, yeah. he just jumps and launches himself. But oh. it's like a whole new mechanic that I never thought of in a 2D Sonic game. Interesting. Uh, but it's really good. It's And it's a fan game. Um, and a lot of them are just like uh, like redone sprites. So Sonic looks way different. He either looks better. He's got new animations. So, uh, but there's a huge collection of them. Um and I'm really excited to play a bunch of them. But, yeah, this one I was playing Sonic ZX. It's very unfair, too. It's very hard, but... ZX? ZX. As long as it's not Marble Zone, I'm fine with anything. I'm... Is that a Eggman redone? Yeah. <laughs> what -a -wah -wah. Is that Sonic Mania? Um... It's a retro remix? Huh. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? What's going to happen now? I don't know that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that with the guitar? Yeah. That's real deep. <laughs> What's that one? So uh, <laughs> everybody should look up Kirby's Dream Band, <laughs> the pink album. That's awesome. Kirby's yeah. Dreamland. I know they're banned, but that's a good play on words. Um, they, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> yeah, they have, uh, let's see. Like retro remakes of songs? Yeah, pretty or much. Or modern remakes of retro songs. Uh, this one. So they have an album called Singles. <laughs> Shibuya Shift, Fever from Dr. Mario. Hmm. Chrono Trigger. That's cool. Echo yeah. Jr. What's Echo Jr.? Oh, uh, like Echo like the, the Dolphin? Dolphin? <laughs> yeah. Kirby. Um, Wave Race 64. Neo Geo song. What a weird array of songs. That is crazy. Yeah, plus some of the fan games have their own soundtracks, and they're actually really cool. I wouldn't... Well, I guess I consider it Sonic music, but it's it's totally in the vein of Sonic music, which is real cool. But. You're in the vein of Sonic music. <laughs> That's dark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm done here. Yeah, I'm done like chicken dinner. Yep. Oh, I'm hungry. I'm all right. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out. Yes. Um, we will see you next week. Mm -hmm. And uh, subscribe on iTunes if you haven't yet. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. Do that. Do that. That do. We're going to have a bunch of videos up there soon. Yes. It's going to be radical. Mm -hmm. um, the Keep Up VE. Yes. Oh. Uh, we have the new thing 
Do we? We do. <gasps> I had to show you it after. Sick. Yes. Well, I'm going to leave him hanging while you Yeah. <laughs> while you do the thing you do. Um, You're so excited. I was, I was. I forgot I had it. That's why. Um, so have you ever thought when you open a DVD, you're like, this is the movie I want to watch. But then you put it in, and you're like, this isn't the movie I want to watch. And then it turns out you put in a CD, and you're like, wah, wah. So then you start listening to music, and the music turns out to be part of the DVD. And you're like, what am I doing right now? So then you start playing DVD games, and you're like, oh, crap, Shrek's behind me. And then you're like, well, I guess I'm just going to have a dance party with Shrek. 